go in here and just say transparent and, and say apply. So now if we start drawing a box, it looks like it still put uh, white in there. So if we go here and say, well actually transparent is white. So all right, so we got it uh, transparent. That's because we went to the fill color and made sure that it said transparent. It's clicked on that, apply. It's now transparent. Now remember, if we start clicking anywhere, we're going to start drawing a box again. So we're going to go up to the selection tool and then click on our box. So if we double click the box, inside the box, double click it, now you can see we have the cursor flashing where we can start drawing some, typing some text. If we just uh, type some test, some uh, text, you can see that uh, we've got the, si the font, the size, bold, italic. So if we want to change that, we just hold down our left mouse button and drag it over to where we have what we want highlighted. And then we're going to choose maybe a different uh, font. Some pretty wacky fonts there. Or change, get put bold on there, unbold it italicize it or the size of it so that's how you can uh, change things in a text box remember just double click to start double you have to double click inside the box to get it to where you can highlight it if I just click once you can see that it doesn't uh, allow me to start typing and change anything. Now your text box you can drag to make it smaller. Let's say that uh, I had a text box that was not big enough for my text. You know, you can only see some of it. That's where you can take this and drag it out to where you can see it all. Another thing if you want to get a lot of text in only a small area, obviously you need to change your font size to a lot smaller font to where you can get everything in there. But you can adjust the box around your text to have it all in there. So we will go up here and hit the select tool, select this box, hit delete. The next thing is the highlight tool. If we draw a highlight around these balls, you can see how it changed to a different color. And uh, that makes it stand out from the rest of the picture. Now you can see there's a highlight mode over here, which allows you to do different things. You can hit grayscale, and you can see how it changed all the color of the rest of the picture except for this. That makes it stand out even more. Or you can uh, highlight text, which we don't have any in there. Highlight area which allows you to change this area. You can see how it blurred the rest of the picture. Blur radius here, if we do that, you can see it's blurring it even more. We'll just uh, type in a two there or something so it isn't so bad. And brightness, obviously, you can make it uh, you can see that this, these things here are affecting the outside of the highlighted area. So those are some different, you can also magnify and make this stuff larger. And you can see there's a magnify factor, but obviously anything you get up there too high, it's not going to be able to be uh, readable. So we will go up here to the selection tool, highlight this, hit crop. I mean, hit delete. Let's go. And the uh, highlight, uh, we just did that one. The obfuscate is where you're allowed, you can uh, grab something and pixelate it. You can see up here there's a obfuscation mode, which means you can either pixelate it or blur it. Now that isn't very blurry, so you can go up here to the blur radius. And as you see, each time you click, it gets to the point where it's so blurry you can't even read it. 
So the whole point of the obfuscate is to make it unreadable so somebody can't uh, say you that you're dealing with a credit card or you had personal information in here somewhere you could make it uh, to where people couldn't read it. So we will uh, grab the selection tool here, highlight that, we'll hit delete. And the last thing is a crop button, which as I said previously, will allows you to crop out any part of this. So say we have a bunch of objects on here and we only want to try and keep some of the pool table, then we could highlight the area we want to keep. And then if we say confirm, it's going to crop out all the rest of that. All right, let's put this to a test here and uh, see if we can uh, draw some lines here to indicate what we'd want to do in this uh, one pocket shot. Uh, this is an alternative to the weed table. Uh, so if you have DVDs or something like that, you can uh, grab screenshots or even grab screenshots off of uh, videos that are online. As you're playing them, you can just uh, grab a screenshot of it, pause it and grab a screenshot, and then you can uh, bring it up here and, and create some uh, what would you do type things. So in this uh, instance here, first thing we'd want to do is draw a line, or actually an arrow, because we're going to show uh, hitting this ball. So you can choose an arrow or a line, whichever way you want to do it. I'm just going to hold it right next to the cue ball and click. i got to hit the arrow here first. See how it changes to a crosshair? That means you're in that mode. So I'm going to grab it here and go up to this first ball. Now as you can see, the arrowhead is in the wrong side, so that's easy to fix. We just go up here to arrowhead and say endpoint. And that now the arrow is pointing this way. So if I want to click another, make another one, remember I'm still in the mode of creating arrows. If I don't want to do that, if I want to fix this line right now, then I want to go up to that selection tool and then click on it. And you can see the little black boxes are there. Now I can, uh, you can see at the very end of this, if you hold your mouse on the very end black box, that allows you to drag it anywhere and uh, change it. So say we wanted to make it a little more up here. Okay, now we've drawn a line there. Let's draw another arrow here. And say we're going to draw it over to here to hit the rail. And then we're going to click again and draw another one. Say we want it to go in here, and uh, maybe another arrow here, and uh, maybe even another arrow this way. Now, it, well, something you can possibly do here is the color of the balls. Maybe you want to uh, have arrows to show which way they're going. So we can see this ball right here. Is uh, if we draw an arrow here, say we want to change this arrow color to more represent this ball, then as you can see, we still have the crosshairs here, so we know we're in drawing mode. So we're going to go up to selection tool and click on this arrow, and you can see the black is now changed to show that it's selected. And we're going to go up here to the uh, line color. And now we can choose a color that's more representative of this ball. Maybe something like that. Let's say apply. You can see now it changed the color of this. And if we wanted to make the line a little thicker, then we can do that. So that's how you can change each separate, separate arrow here or adjust them as you go. We just make sure we have the selection tool. We click on the one we want to edit. From there you can you know make the line go this way or something now if we click on that one we can uh, you know change the which way it goes or 
as you can see we've got this highlighted so we can go up here and change the color of that to, to something else so now we have a different colored line maybe you want uh, the cue ball to have thicker lines so we highlight that we just go up here to line thickness you know change the that one if you want to but that's how you do it that's how you change things is uh, you're simply selecting them and then you can change the color the thickness of the line arrowheads all that kind of jazz